Hey everyone, welcome to Brock Automotive. Today we're working on the 95 GMC 3500 Wrecker. Today we're doing some rear end work. Um, Notice that it seemed to have a little bit of a clunk or some play in it when you would, you know, take off, let off the, the throttle or back on the throttle. Um, seemed to have some play. We'll go underneath here in a second. I'll show you what I found. So now we're under the truck. This is the drive shaft, of course, the yoke, and then the rear axle. This movement you see in the drive shaft is how much it will turn before the rear end engages the wheels and it starts turning the tires. Um, that is a tremendous amount of play and that's one good shock to the drive line from probably breaking something, either the rear end itself or maybe an axle or whatever. So we've got the differential cover off, got all the oil drained out of it. Um, I've let it drain for about an hour now. I sprayed it out with some brake clean so we can see a little bit better up in here as to what's going on. Um, the oil looked okay. It was a little dirty. It was time to change it, but it wasn't so nasty or full of metal or anything like that that, you know, that could be wearing the rear end out. Um, the ring gear here looks really good. Uh, the wear on the teeth, I mean, you could tell it's got some miles on it, but at the same time, none of the teeth are chipped or broken or anything like that. The wear pattern looks good on the teeth. The shiny spot is where the ring gear touches the pinion gear and that's a wear mark but it's centered pretty well on the tooth uh, from top to bottom and from end to end so that's great that's just what you would want where all the wear is coming from is the spider gear set up in here um, I'm gonna try and rotate the drive shaft back and forth while we look up in here so you can see that top gear there moving up and down side to side all over the place as I begin to rotate the drive shaft and all that slack in between these gear teeth in here is what's causing all the slack in the drivetrain. Um, pretty normal thing you know they get worn out carrying heavy loads and hundreds of thousands of miles so we've got a kit coming we can replace these four spider gears inside here the pin and it'll be a lot closer to like new than it is right now. You can also see on the spider gears here, uh, the the chipping up here on the top of the, let's see if I can get my finger in here to show you, the chipping right here on the ends of the gears, um, that's not oil on them, that's an actual piece of the tooth that's flaked off. Um, we've caught this rear end right at the moment of, uh, you know, it's worn, it needs fixed, but it hasn't worn so much that it started to tear up the other gears in the rear end, the ring gear or the pinion. As those flakes come off, they go into the oil and then get circulated between the teeth on all the rest of the gears in here as you drive. Um, that really accelerates the amount of wear in there and it looks like we caught it just in time. The rear axle in this truck is made by Dana. This is a Dana Model 80. It's a pretty heavy duty rear end. Um, to order those spider gears that we just looked at, they made two different variations of this rear end in this year and model of truck. One had 35 splines on the axle, the other had 37 splines. So you need to know how many splines your particular rear end has before you can order and get the right part. The splines they're talking about is on the end of this shaft, which is the axle shaft. It splines into the wheel out here, or to the, actually to the hub out here and it splines to the side gear inside the rear end we were just looking at. So the way you get this out, take the cap off. And a lot of times, yep, you can just pull it right out of there, just grab it onto this to get a grip with the pliers. Pull this axle out. I've already had this one out today, um, but you're gonna wanna set a cup under here. I use an old coffee can. Um, I've already had it out today, so the vast majority of the oil has already come out of this hub. You can see a little bit still dripping out. When you initially pull this axle out, you're gonna have quite a bit of oil come out of there. So I just wedge an old coffee can underneath of it, just like that, it catches the oil, doesn't get all over your wheels. So we're gonna pull this axle out the rest of the way. And here on the end of the axle, you'll see all these splines, real fine teeth that engage that side gear inside the differential. 
And we'll throw this up here on the bench. All right. So I have the axle shaft up here on the bench now. Uh, the teeth that it's talking about, or splines sometimes they're called, are these right around here. Typically the way I do it is take something and mark one of the teeth, like this crayon. Mark one of them like I did here, and then start counting. So I know the marked one is number one. You just count the teeth all the way around the spline. And when you get back up here, you know which one you started on. These have 37 splines around them. So I know I need the part for the Dana 80 with 37 splines. All right, so we're back at it again today. Uh, this is the next day or two days later from the last part of the video. We've got the ring gear and carrier assembly out here on the bench out of the rear end. We've got our new parts from Yukon Gear and Axle. There's the part number, like I said, for a 37 spline. You see there in the description. This is our new side gears that the axle slide into. And the rest of the spider gear set, new pin, a new roll pin that holds it in. Um, we'll get this blown apart here, look at a couple things on it. As I said under the, the truck, all the ring gear teeth, which are these here, if you didn't know, they all look fine. Don't see any chips or any abnormal wear or anything to be concerned about on either side of the teeth um, however here on the spider gears like we saw underneath there is some pitting some flaking of the hardened material off of them we'll get a closer look at those when we get them out of the carrier and out on the bench all right so i dug around in the box a little bit and it comes with installation instructions and a pretty cool sticker that's kind of neat don't know where we'll put that yet maybe on the toolbox maybe on the back of the truck they, before I blow this apart, the numbers here, there are numbers, I should say, on the side of a ring gear. Um, some of them are part numbers. This here, 510 of 94, that's very likely the day that this ring gear was made. Dana, that's the brand or the company that made it. Not sure what all this stuff is, but eventually we're going to get around to two numbers. Almost every ring gear that I've seen has these numbers on it somewhere. And what those are is that's the number of teeth on the pinion gear and the number of teeth on the ring gear. So if we crawl under the truck and look at the pinion, we can see that it has eight teeth on it. And if we count the number of teeth here on the ring gear all the way around, you're gonna find that there's 37 of them. You divide those, 37 divided by eight tells you the gear ratio of this gear set. And if you do the math, it's 4.6, Two five, I believe, which rounds up to 463 gears in this truck. These HD trucks typically had high ratio rear ends in them for extra uh, pulling power, extra towing capacity. All right, so I'm kind of glad that I don't have a regular live stream kind of a video uh, where you're watching me work because I just had a mini heart attack here a moment ago. I saw this guy laying on the bench and at first glance, that looks a whole lot like something else, doesn't it? Looks like one of the rollers in the bearing here. I've had this thing in my arms and turned over probably six or seven times here in the last little bit. I look down, I see that laying on the bench. I thought one of my rollers fell off. Now I've got to change these bearings. You got to press those on and off. It just turns this into a whole big deal. But luckily, this just happens to be a quarter inch drive socket that one of my guys left laying on the bench to give me a heart attack. The bearings are all in good shape, all the rollers are there. We're gonna start taking the spider gears out of it now. To do that, we have to take this pin out. To get that pin out, we have to do two things. Drive this little roll pin out. Sometimes there's a bolt in here that you just take out with a wrench that holds this pin in place. This one has this roll pin that we have to drive through. And secondly, you can see we don't have enough room to slide the pin out without taking the ring gear off. So we're gonna take all these bolts off, which hold the ring gear to the carrier. Okay, we got the ring gear off. Again, just took the bolts out. The ring gear fell right off of the carrier. Sometimes there's kind of a tight fit between the two. This one, as soon as I started taking the last bolt out, it let go. In here, we can see a little bit better angle now with the ring gear out of the way. But here we can see uh, more damage on the teeth that we were looking at earlier. Just see it a little bit better now with the ring gear out of the way. 
again, we'll look at this a lot closer once I get these out of the carrier and, and cleaned up where we can really see what's going on. But quite a bit of damage. I'm pretty surprised based on how much damage is in here to these teeth that our ring gear and our pinion looks so good. Um, whatever happened to these teeth or whatever piece of metal got caught in here and kind of mangled these gears up, luckily it did not go through the ring gear and the pinion as well. Surprisingly, but luckily. All right, so we've got the pin drove out. Uh, went in that hole there. To get it out, you just get the BFH out. And a punch. Here's the punch I used over here. I had to modify this one a little bit. It wasn't long enough to get through far enough uh, to knock the pin all the way out. So I just took it to the grinder, went slow, ground it down a little bit, cooled it down, ground some more. Um, you want to keep these fairly cool when you're grinding on them. If they start getting kind of too warm to hold on to, you need to put them in some oil, kind of roll it back and forth in just engine oil or gear oil or whatever, and cool it down because that's going to keep the hardness in it. If you get it too hot, it's going to become soft, and then driving on it, <coughs> this punch will bend like really easily. It'll be pretty well worthless to you. But we got that pin drove out. Now we're just going to take this cross pin out. We can drive it out from one end to the other. A lot of times you can just kind of put thumb pressure on these and push and it'll slide right out of there. This one's stuck pretty good. I got a feeling when we get it apart, we're going to see a lot of wear on this pin too. This here's the new pin. It should be, you know, nice and smooth from one end to the other. Um, but I got a feeling we're going to see some wear on this one where these gears are riding on it. All right, we got some stuff cleaned up here. If you can't tell, on a side note, if you can't tell, I'm kind of new to this YouTube thing. Actually, I'm very new. This is about the third video I've made. So hopefully things get better here as we go along. So I'm still trying to kind of learn as I go. Um, got these gears out of the diff, out of the carrier, and cleaned up. On these gears, we can see a little bit of wear. Actually, that's a lot of wear for inside of a, a differential. But we can see some stuff there. Um... These cuts here in the gear, I don't really recall seeing that in other rear ends, but these are, you know, so even they're in the same spot on every tooth. They seem to be about the same depth. So I'm assuming that those were cut in there by a machine when the gear was made. But there's some more of the material missing out of the tooth. This, this gear here is a lot worse than this one as far as all this material missing out of the teeth. It kind of looks like something got in here, a chunk of something, and got mangled up in between all these teeth. Kind of strange, I didn't see anything inside the rear end when I drained the oil. Uh, I think I said earlier in the video the oil was dirty, needed to be changed, but it wasn't, it wasn't like there was a bunch of chunks of metal floating around in it or water or anything like that. Um, if I remember right, these gears didn't look too awful bad here. I know this lighting kind of sucks. You can see that pretty obvious. Let's see if we can do anything about that. Um, that that's kind of better, ain't it? These gears here did have some, some mangling on them too. I don't know how well it shows up in the, in the camera there, but... I almost have a feeling that somebody's been in here before. I don't know, but these little steel shims, I know in the new kit, there's one for every gear. There's ones that go on the back of these smaller gears and then one larger ones that go on the back of these axle gears, side gears. As I said, when I started taking the, the pin out, I thought it had some wear in it. It does, you can see in between my fingers here, you can see a nice groove wore into the pin itself. Um, that's actually a lip right there. I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but there's an, a physical lip here on each side where it's worn down into the pin. That's quite a bit of wear for inside of a rear end. Like I said earlier, I think I've said it a couple times, um, we caught this rear end kind of right at the spot where Things were going to get bad pretty quickly if we didn't find this and, and get it taken care of. Um, with all the play that was between these gears, you know, they're loose on the shaft there like that. 
that should be a, a lot tighter fit than what we've got there. So they're loose that way. They're loose between each other this way. And, you know, 50 thousandths here, 60 thousandths there. At the end of it, it adds up to a lot of play inside the rear end that you don't want. I'm going to throw all this stuff to the side. I've got the carrier cleaned up over there. On a side note, what do you guys use for cleaning parts? Uh, I've got a parts washer tank. Um, the solution I have in it right now, I think I got it Home Depot. It was kind of in a big five-gallon bucket. It was purple. You mix it with water. It was concentrated. It was supposed to be a really good cleaner. And when I put it in there brand new, it was really good. It would literally take paint off of stuff. Uh, okay, so here's our new parts laid out on the bench. Um, I said a minute ago that I thought maybe somebody had been inside this. Here are the steel shims that I was talking about that one comes on each gear in the new kit. Our old rear, our old spider gears that we took apart only had one of these. It was missing both of these and the other one, the other shim on this spider gear. Um, I don't know that somebody had been inside of it, but it, it just does seem strange to me that three are missing and there's only, you know, one in there. The new pin here, you can see perfectly smooth from one end to the other. It really kind of stands out. I don't know what I did with it. Here it is. Kind of stands out the old pin, you know, how much wear there really is in it here when you compare it to this new pin. Slid the new pin through the carrier, uh, slides right in and out with finger pressure. I'll show you that in a minute. This old pin was getting hung up because of these uh, wear marks in it. I actually had to drive it out with a punch. Didn't come out super hard, but you definitely weren't pushing it out with your fingers. These new gears from, from Yukon, I'm really impressed with the kit that they sent. It was really affordable, and I think it's going to fix what we need fixed in this rear end. Um, these Dana 80s are a little bit hard to come by, and they're pretty pricey when you do find them. Um, I found a couple good used ones out of a, a wreck truck or something like that, but they were up in the you know thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range, probably. A little bit more than that by the time you paid shipping to get it here. Um, this kit here was under $200, um, or right at $200 anyway, where I got it from. So, you know, if we can put a little bit of time in this thing, $200 worth of parts, and get another five, six, seven years out of this rear end, living a, a happy and active life, you know, that's that's really all I can ask. All right, folks, I don't know how well you can see, but we're gonna try this in a live thing. I was test fitting these, the new gears and everything into the old carrier here. Everything fits pretty well. I think we're gonna be fine. I'm gonna start putting it together. I'm gonna put some assembly lube on it. You can use regular gear oil or this assembly lube. I just had some assembly lube sitting around from an old engine build, just barely any in the jug. So I'm going to use some of it just to kind of Give everything a little bit of lube before as we put it together you know it'll it'll help things slide together just a little bit easier a little bit of this cam lube goes a long way it's sticky as honey or maybe a little bit stickier i guess side gears uh axle gears really no particular way they go in as far as you know one on this side or one on that side it's kind of wherever you put them is is where they go. There's no timing marks or anything like that, say like in a installing a camshaft or a timing set or whatever in an engine. There's no timing marks or anything here in the rear end. There are some clearances you have to watch, some some clearances you have to set with different shims for setting up the ring and pinion gear. Uh, we're not changing any of that, so we should be able to bolt everything right back in where it came from. And be in really good shape as far as our gear setup, the backlash and and so forth. All right, got that baby up in there. Hopefully that'll I was gonna say hopefully that'll stay long enough to get these other gears in, but I guess when you lube stuff up it, it doesn't really stay gravity wise. So I'm going to hold this axle gear up in here with one hand. Put that down so I can do what I'm doing here. I'm going to hold that baby up in there where it goes. We're about to run out of some light here. 
put that side gear in and let it sit right there while I wipe all this assembly lube off my hands. I'm going to get a fresh light so you guys can see what's happening. All right, we're back. We got a new light so we can see what we're doing. Put a little bit of lube on this, put this last part of the spider gear set in here. So to put these side gears in, you want to get these two basically directly across from each other. I've got to rotate this guy around. Put a little shim in here where it goes in the meantime. Keep rotating him around till it gets all the way here on the opposite side from where the camera is. Okay, there went our shim. I think I can slide it in. Yeah, I can slide it in from this side. All right. So once we get it around on the opposite side there from where the camera is, I can put this one in. The hole on the other side of the carrier over here, away from the camera, is not big enough to get the gear through. It's kind of a smaller hole from top to bottom than this one is. But now that I've got them across from each other, I can turn this whole assembly, get these shims back in here where they belong, hopefully. Show where it needs to be. Of course not. I don't know if I can slide it in from this side. So I can't really start my pin through at the moment to hold any of this because as soon as my pin goes through, none of this moves any longer. I've got that shim where it needs to be. I've got that shim generally where it needs to be. So now I'm going to slide the pin through here. The only thing I got to watch for is the end of my pin that has the hole in it for the roll pin to go through just has to be on this end of the carrier. Doesn't matter whether the pin goes in like that or like that, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put some lube on her here. Make sure my little metal shim's still in the right place. Get the pin started through that gear what I was saying earlier when everything's the way it's supposed to be even in a a used rear end if it's not completely shot and grooved up like this one was you can take this pin a lot of times when you take the bolt out if the rear if the carrier is still in the the housing if this is pointing toward the floor and you take that bolt out this pin will just slide down right out of the carrier all by itself you don't even have to touch it so do a little wiggling a little pushing, a little smacking, and the pin goes right in. So now everything's lined up, except for our, our hole here. Put that where we want it. Now that's lined up. We can drive our roll pin back down through here, and everything is right where we want it. You can see now, hopefully you can see, how much less movement it has between these gears as opposed to the way it was when we looked at it earlier, when all the worn out stuff was in here and this was still in the, in the truck. So I'm gonna shut the camera off, drive this pin in, and then we'll look at it again before we put the ring gear back on. Okay, we've got everything installed. We got the roll pin drove back in. Our pin is locked in there now. Uh, all of our gears are in here. Everything's moving nice and smooth. You're gonna have a little bit of play between these gears. Um, I don't want people to think that you shouldn't have any play at all. You're gonna have a little bit because as these gears get hot from use, they're all gonna expand just slightly. So the gap between them will close up a little bit as they get warm. Um, plus you're gonna have your, your thick gear oil in between them. So this amount of play is perfectly acceptable. I'm pretty happy with the way all this turned out. I'm anxious to get all this back in the truck and see how much the the slack in the drive shaft has changed now. I'm going to take the ring gear over to the parts washer, get it cleaned up, get all of our bolts cleaned up here that hold the ring gear to the carrier, and we'll be back. Okay, got all the bolts cleaned up. Got the ring gear just laying back on the, the carrier at the moment. 
my line from earlier I've got lined up down here. I'm going to put a little bit of red thread locker on the bolts. This stuff's expensive. I don't know if you've priced any lately, but this little bottle right here, I don't know how big that is, but fits in my hand. This thing was over $20 for this little bottle. I mean, really, you know, you don't use thread locker a whole lot, and when you do, you don't use very much quantity of it, so it'll last you a while, but still, it just hurts to pay $20 for a little bottle of thread locker. I'm gonna put some of these bolts in finger tight, and then I'm gonna turn the carrier upside down where I can get to the bolt heads and everything a whole lot easier than being, you know, upside down right here. Okay, so we got our old bolt back together. All the bolts are back in. They've got red Loctite on them. I've torqued them down to factory specifications. Or I will, actually, when I get it mounted back in the truck. What I'm going to do is uh, mount this back in the truck the way it goes. I can apply the parking brake, which is on this model truck, is on the drive shaft. So that's going to hold the drive shaft from spinning, which will hold the ring gear from spinning. I can torque the bolts that I can get to, take the brake off, turn it, torque some more bolts, etc., until I've got everything torqued real nice. Um, as I said earlier, we lined up our mark, so I know the ring gear is back on the carrier in the same spot. So we've got the carrier assembly back in the, in the axle housing. We've got the caps torqued down like they're supposed to be. All that went back together real easy, just like we'd want. We've got the axle slid back in the hubs again. We've got to put the caps on put the diff cover back on and fill it up with oil, we'll be all set. Okay, we've got the cover back on and everything, ready to fill it up with oil. A couple of tips, put your drain pan, I always move the drain pan out and empty all the oil out of it before I start putting stuff back together or working under there, because nine times out of 10, you're gonna drop something, a tool or a bolt or whatever, and it's gonna go right in the old oil, and then you gotta get up to your wrist to find it in there and fish it out. So I'll always pull that out after it's done draining dump all the old oil out. Now I've got a clean, empty drain pan under there. I can start filling it up through this hole here. As far as the amount or the level of the oil, you wanna fill it up until it starts dribbling out the bottom of that fill hole. Um, when it reaches the level of the bottom of that hole, it's full. So just keep pumping it in there until it starts coming out the hole. Another tip, instead of using uh, quart gear oil bottles or whatever, you can buy one of these pumps. Every parts store has it over by the oil aisle. Um, you can either put it in the gallon of gear oil or this is the empty washer fluid jug that I use and then I can pour whatever I want into it, transmission fluid, gear oil, what have you. And you can just pump this while you're under the car. The oil will come out this hose, go into the rear end. This is a whole lot easier to snake up and around exhaust pipes and shocks and whatever else is in the way rather than trying to get that plastic bottle up in there and get everything squirted out of it. So we're going to fill her up and we'll see how much better the slack in the drivetrain is now. Okay, so we're back under the truck now. We've got the rear end filled up with oil. I started the truck, put it in gear with the back wheels off the ground, let everything turn for a minute to kind of circulate the oil around fill up any cracks and crevices, start getting the oil to go through the axle tubes and out to the wheels uh, for the wheel bearings. So now we can see how much play we have in the drive shaft now that we've made our repairs and everything is a lot better shape than it was before. So you remember at the beginning of the video, we had a lot of movement in this drive shaft and, and pinion before it made it to the wheels, before the power made it to the wheels and made the wheels turn. So now you can see that little bit right there is all we have. Um, still a little bit more than a brand new truck, but at the same time, this rear end's got close to 280,000 miles on it. Um, so the improvement that we made is a lot. Um, I'm real happy with the way everything turned out. It's a thousand percent better than it was. And I think if we can get another you know, four or five, six years out of this rear end, maybe another 30, 40, 50,000 miles, I think we're going to be in great shape. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. And hopefully you like my videos. Leave me some comments. Tell me what you think. Thanks. Have a great day.